I am Anil Kumar sharing with you a question from Nelson, Advanced Functions Textbook, question 19, page 377, on the request of my subscriber on YouTube. Rates of change trigonometric functions. The function p of t equals to 100 minus 20 cos 8 pi by 3t models the blood pressure p in millimeters of mercury at time t in seconds of a person at rest. What is the period of the function? Calculate the average rate of change in person's blood pressure on the interval 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 and estimate instantaneous rate of change in person's blood pressure at t equals to 0 0.5. Now to find the period of the function, let's look into the function itself and the k value, which is cos 8 pi by 3. So from here we know k is equals to 8 pi by 3. Time period t is 2 pi by k. So time period t is equals to 2 pi divided by 8 pi by 3. That gives you pi and pi cancels, then you get 3 over 4 and the units are seconds, right? So you get time period is equal to 3 by 4 seconds. Now this is part B and then we have part C here. So part B is calculate the average rate of change in person's blood pressure on the interval 0 0.2 to 0.3. So I'll not do the calculation, but let's write it down. So basically, we will be calculating P of 0 0.3 minus P of 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.3 minus 0 0.2. So that is what you have to find. You can use the calculator, calculate the value. When we say P of 0 0.3, it means what? It means that you have to substitute T as 0 0.3 calculate the value of p of 3, right? Similarly, substitute t as 0.2. Once you have these values, then you can divide and get your answer. The part C is estimate the instantaneous rate of change in person's blood pressure at t equals to 0 0.5. Now, for such a question, you can use centered value. So in that case, what we can do is that we can find p of a point which is 0 0.01 to the right, let's say 0 0.501 minus P of 0 0.499, right? So then we have a centered value divided by 0 0.501 minus 0 0.499. So that should give you the answer for this particular question, correct? As an additional exercise, what you should also do is graph this function, right? And I would like you to find out a point on this graph, rather two points, where you should be expecting maximum instantaneous rate of change, right? So let me add that part here. So part D will be find T for maximum instantaneous rate of change, right? So to give you a hint on that part, I'll kind of sketch the function and show you. Since this is a cosine function starting with negative, our function is going to be something like this, right? Where what we are given here is, is an axis which is at value of 100 maximum will be 20 more and the minimum will be 20 less which will be 80 for us. So time period is as we calculate 3 by 4 of a second. So let us say this is somewhere here t equals to 0. Then this will be t equals to 3 fourth of a second. Correct? So we can divide 3 by 4 and get our answer which is 3 divided by is in decimals 0 0.75 so 0 0.75 seconds right so this will be half of 3 by 4 it's good to work with fractions at, 
actually. So this is 3 by 8 of a second, right? So half of, let's say slightly more than 0.3, right? Slightly more than 0.3. Right, so maximum instantaneous rate of change will actually be at these points. As you see, the concavity changes, do you see? Since the concavity changes at these points, it is like of concave up on this side and concave down on this side, we have kind of a vertical tangent giving rise to a very high instantaneous rate. Similarly here, we have a function which is coming like this and going like this. Do you see the change? So it's kind of vertical at these points. So these are the points which will give you maximum instantaneous rate of change and their value is quarter of the cycle which is the cycle is 3 over 4 so this will be 3 over quarter of this which is 16 right so first quarter second quarter third quarters will be 9 over 16 so if you find instantaneous rate of change at these points you will get high instantaneous rate of change. So 0.5 is actually close to 9 over 16. So also find instantaneous rate of change at 9 over 16, right? So that point T seems to be at 3 over 16 or at 9 over 16. Of course, one value is going to be positive, the other is going to be negative, but their absolute values will be same. So as an added exercise, I'd like you to calculate these values also to understand this function better. Now this function has been treated in almost every chapter of trigonometric functions. So from examination point of view also, it is a very important function for you to analyze. Thank you and all the best.